Hello and welcome to this week's episode of One on One Sports. I'm Matt Holzaffel. And I'm Brad Clear. Let's dive right into the three strikes. Ichiro Suzuki has returned to the Seattle Mariners after five and a half years. Mariners fans, media, and teammates alike are anxious to see what the game will look like for the 44-year-old outfielder. The question is, Brad, will we joining the Mariners be a positive thing for Ichiro's career? Uh, I think it is. I think it's a storybook ending, right? He's 44 years old. This is obviously the end. He's obviously in the twilight of his career. Where did he start his MLB career? Where did he become the megastar internationally and globally that he is? Seattle. Where does he live when he's in America and not Japan? Seattle. It's the perfect place to end his career. The fans will appreciate him more than any other place would. And it's just great to come full circle to see a, play, a player retire where they started their career. I agree career. with everything you said. And when I first read this, I was like, this is a publicity stunt. It's just for a send-off, sell some more tickets for a team that hasn't made the playoffs since 2001. Mm -hmm. Then I look into it some more. The last time the Mariners made the playoff 2001, that was Ichiro's Rookie of the Year That's season, right. MVP season. They haven't been the same team since not only that season, but since he left. Ichiro is going to play till he's 50 at least. He's going to go through well, 50. Well, he guaranteed he would play till yeah, at least 50. Yeah, but he's not in the majors. I think after this year, the next five he will be in Japan. He will play as long as someone wants to, wants to. He'll go play in Japan if they don't want him in America. Yeah, I think that's what the likely scenario is because if there was an article that ESPN had put out, you know, it had taken a very long time for them to get any traction as far as any MLB team showing interest in signing him. The Mariners did just now. But in Japan, anyone in that league And the sign reason the, the Mariners signed him is because they know what he brings to a team. They know that, one, he's a great leader. He a great work ethic, mm -hmm. and also that he knows the culture around Seattle, and that he can change that. Exactly. This is the way the team operates. All in my mind, it's all positive. Exactly. Serena Williams has returned to professional tennis for the first time since giving birth to her daughter. Williams had not played a singles match since January of 2017. Her comeback started off with wins against Serena Diaz and Kiki Burton's this weekend. Last night, she lost against her sister Venus Williams in round three at Indian Wells. With this, with this in mind, how long do you think it'll take for Serena to get back to the top of women's tennis? Women's tennis is at its best when Serena Williams is playing. Let me mm -hmm. say that. Now, I think despite the loss versus Venus, it's not going to take that long. Serena has the third most weeks at number one in women's tennis history, only, be only behind a couple of legends, Steffi Graf and Martina Navratilova. So it's not going to take too long. And now that loss to Venus, everyone's like, oh, she wasn't ready. Of course she wasn't ready. Venus has played in two Grand Slams in the last year. Uh, yeah. Venus is at the top of her game right now, so those I, two wins in yeah, the previous round. I, I, I think are. the big thing here is time. I'm never going to bet against Serena Williams. She's one of the best female as athletes you shouldn't. in any sport ever, right? And uh, like as you said, was she prepared to the fullest uh, capabilities? No. So give her time. By the end of this year, she'll. I think she'll have won a, you, an Open or a tournament of some type by the end of this year. And then coming into 2019, she'll definitely be recognized for what she is as the best women's for tennis sure. player and in the world. For sure, and it was good to see them play Indian Wells. They, remember, they, that's where they started their careers, uh -huh. Venus and Serena, having plates in there. I think it was 2001. And so since, since she came back, everyone's like, oh, she's going to be Serena of old. She's ready to go. Obviously, she's she's just not, not, she she's, even said that herself, right? Yeah, she's not what she is going. She's not at her uh, fullest capabilities yet. And it just takes time. She's not really Serena of old. She's not a new Serena. She's just getting and back into her stride. And people take for granted Serena. how how much it took to be a Serena of old. She was Agreed. the best, Agreed. not just women's tennis player in the world, possibly the best tennis player just you know in their respective gender for that. And, for and tennis. if we take it outside of tennis, like I know at the time Ronda Rousey was the you know the most popular female athlete in the world. But in terms of action, you know, when Ronda Rousey started going downhill, Serena Williams is still at that level. You could make the argument. Over the last three, four years, Serena Williams is the best women's athlete in the and entire world. And whether or not she ever breaks Steffi Graf's record for most weeks at number one, she will go down as the best women's tennis player uh -huh. of all time, as, she, as she should. Yeah. And so I think these matches were good. They got her mm -hmm. back into the mindset, and we saw some unforced errors and some you know, not really powerful serves in her first match against Bertens, but she came back, fought through that, and she came back to this year, and we know I'm excited to see her come back even in more. In time, she'll probably be back at number one. Exactly. Colorado State announced their intentions to interview Becky Hammond for the vacant head coaching position for their men's basketball team. Probably the best women's basketball player in Colorado State history, Hammond became the first female full-time assistant coach in the NBA when she joined Greg Popovich's staff in 2014. Hammond would become the first woman to ever coach an NCAA Division I men's basketball team. Now, Brad, what kind of impact would this have on NCAA men's basketball? I think it would be huge because there's sort of this weird stigma when it comes to male sports with female coaches it doesn't really happen at all. Whereas with women's collegiate sports, there are plenty of male coaches. I think what this would do would be a couple things. One, it would remove that stigma. And two, it would just give a significant um, increase in chances and opportunities for incredibly talented women who can make an impact on NCAA men's basketball. Obviously, in a diversity sense, it'll be big, but in an actual talent sense, it could add some new perspective where uh, coaching I as well. I agree, and there's no one more deserving than Becky Hammond. Like Agreed. we mentioned, best basketball player in women's Colorado State history as her jersey retired. She mm -hmm. in the, the Colorado Sports Hall of Fame. Here's my thing. 
1972, yeah. 90% of head coaches back. in all of women's sports, yeah. that's a dozen sports were women. Okay. That was before Title IX was passed, right? That sure. obviously outlawing gender discrimination mm -hmm. in the yeah. workplace. Now it's about 40%. And Gino Oriyama of UConn mentioned that that's probably because more, more opportunities opening up outside of sports. But mm -hmm. we've seen that number drop for a reason, and that's because just the amount of women's coaches, just maybe it's not a desirable position for one reason or another, we've seen it go down. And so while I think Becky Hammond coaching Colorado State is a great thing for her and for Colorado State, I don't think it necessarily means we're going to see an instant uh, Oh, you know, well, not upgrade. instant, but over time, more opportunities, more people getting involved. And then you look in the NBA, you have a, you, Becky's probably the best women's assistant coach has ever been, and there's other people in high prominent roles as well. So I think it'll sort of add to the NBA as well as far as female opportunities and NCAA as well. She certainly so deserves it, that's for sure. It remains to be seen. But don't go anywhere. When we come back, our football experts will take a look at the upcoming NFL draft.